Hello and welcome to Access All Areas, brought to you by Crypto.com. Nat Edwards out today, but as always, Matthew Lloyd is here. And Lordo, on the back of some stunning performances from both the old and the new at West Coast Eagles, they got a win. They did, Damo. Fantastic for them. Uh, they've hardly won in a year and a half now under Adam Simpson, even longer than that. You know, So to beat the Tigers the way they did was impressive. Uh, the Tigers jumped out of the block, kicking the first four goals. Shea Bolton was everywhere, but it was... This man, Harley Reid, uh, who's taking all before him, and Elliot Yo, who's got his body right. So, uh, Harley Reid, 27 disposals and a goal. Elliot Yo, uh, he had 27 disposals and two goals. And the affection, Damo, they have for yeah. Harley Reid, you can see it all over. The players just love him. The enthusiasm that he brings, Lordo, and the energy, it, it's helped these older players who have struggled, it must be said now, for the best part of three. Look, look, look Yo here. This is 2018 Yo. Uh, it's good. He, he's back to all Australian form. He's won multiple bests and fairest at that club. And they scored 66 points from clearance. And this, I don't argue. I love this touch. Oh, yeah. We, we, we built this up and in anticipation with what that was going to happen, uh, Reid versus Martin, and there was the moment we wanted. A phenomenal start. And they pumped the ball in that well that uh, Jake Waterman had a career best game. He had uh, six goals yesterday. Felt for Tyler Young. He was out of his depth, uh, the opponent of Jake Waterman. Six goals, 18 disposals, uh, no Gibkiss, no Noah Bolter and they had no hope back there. Really, the Tigers uh, it's going to be a long, hard year. It's round five. You're worried about them, aren't you? I am worried about them because uh, I just just there's no real hope. Dustin Martin again lacked mm. energy, in my opinion, the mm. way he played the game and uh, just crippled by injury. I think it's fair to say that Amuse has held them together pretty well and, until maybe yesterday. I mean, they've beaten Sydney Swans, they've been close in other games, but this injury toll that is now mounting, it, it's a real problem for, for Adam Amuse in his first season. We lost, or they lost, uh, Taranto and Ross during the week off the training track and then Calf goes, uh, Jaden Short goes down yesterday with another calf injury. It, it's a problem, Lotto. Bolter's out, Lynch is out, Grimes. Yeah, no doubt. You, you just can't win games in that situation. Well done to the West Coast Eagles, but uh, they were decimated yesterday and uh, were, were very unlikely to win that. They, they won't be getting out of the bottom four reaches now? No, I wouldn't think so, no. Yeah. no. Geelong and GWS remained unbeaten after the round. We'll start with Geelong. Jeremy Cameron, Lotto, he may still be the best player in the comp by some way, if you want to mount that argument. And I reckon he's had harder training sessions this yeah. year than what happened yesterday. Six goals, you can see the numbers attached to it, and he just ran around doing as he pleased. Unfortunately for North, you could sense it. Uh, within uh, the first minute or two of the game that they were in trouble. They were out of their depth. Clarkson would have known it going into the game. We'll hear from him shortly about you know, what he was up against. But yeah, this guy um, is different to the rest of the players in the comp. He gets midfield numbers, 21 disposals. But look at that from North Melbourne. That's unforgivable that the best player in the game can just get a nice, easy touch around the back. And Biggie Nguyen had to play on him, who you know, was in his first game for North Melbourne. And Comden, there's just too many young players there yeah. that were out of their depth against the Cats. Yeah, Lord, I will look at the North turnovers now. You've, we've already worried about them already for, for some seasons. Nothing is improving and against the best teams in the competition. And they have had a tough draw, it must be said, but they are just out of their depth. They, they, were, they were embarrassing again yesterday. The basic fundamentals of the game, like you can't turn the footy over against high quality teams like Geelong and, and that one from, from Bailey Scott, like just you know, leaning on the back foot, you, you know, not really you know, following through his touch and then Geelong just punish it because they're so well organised. This next one's bad. Luke Davies Uniac misses the kick first mm. and then fumbles next and they just get punished on the way back. And that's so their best player. It is. Uh, so you can understand them not being fit enough or strong enough, but their skills need to be better than what they were yesterday, which is disappointing. So it was 75 points yesterday. It was 70 points the week before. That was against Brisbane Lions. And then 56 before that against Carlton. And, and two other losses to start the year of the, the 30 to 35 point margin. Lord. Alistair Clarkson post-match, uh, he did, I suppose, provide, attempt to provide some reasons and some rationale around it. But I just want to take you through what he did say and then get your views on it. Because uh, there's a lot of excuses being made here by the North Melbourne coach and I think by the North Melbourne footy club. They're a good side um, and very, very experienced and mature bodies and um, that continues to find us out. And we can't do anything about that until uh, we get some more exposure to it and get more time into our players in terms of making them stronger. And um, But, yeah, we've got, compared to the Geelong side, we're, we're a bunch of pups. 
Yeah, there are a bunch of pumps, and, the, and then some of the pumps look okay. But nothing will change, Lotto, in my eyes anyway, until they get a couple of key defenders and some help up forward for Nick Larkey. And nothing, no matter how good the kids are, mm. going to be and, and will be, is going to change that. And, and you want to see them win some quarters, win some moments, but we saw none of that yesterday. Mm. Mm. Lockie Whitfield, Lotto, you want to focus on what he said post-match in the, the Giants win against St Kilda. St Kilda came hard, kicked the last six goals of the game, and, and Whitfield had this to say post-game. We're still not really getting our defence right at the moment. Our offence is pretty good. Um, and, yeah, we were able to control it in patches, especially through the second and third quarter. But, um, yeah, they, they moved the ball hard. They ran hard in that last quarter. So credit to them. They really came back well. So they're on top, the Giants, but they're not playing as well as they'd like. And I think there was a bit of concern there in Lockie Whitfield. And we'll show you the clips of the last quarter where they conceded the last six goals of the game. And they're not working hard enough. So you see three Giants across that... 50-metre uh, arc, not working hard enough. So they just tried to save the game. Yes, they lost Taylor. Yes, they lost Canilio. But that happens in a lot of games. Look at Jack Sinclair out the back. This isn't defensive-minded football of the Giants. And sometimes the way you finish a game is the way you start your next game. And they play Carlton at Marvel Stadium. And I'd be concerned about the, going into that game shortly. Again, just players. It does Finn Callahan, who's on the mark here, really want to work? to defend the ground. Mm. I don't think he does in that point, Damo. So you could see the writing on the wall that another minute or two they lose this game of football. So Adam Kingsley can use this despite winning the game that they were off badly. The mm. GWS Giants had not been a bit patchy. And Taylor's clearly been placed in concussion protocol, yeah. so he won't be there for at yeah. least one game. And, and who knows, uh, beyond that, Canilio also will be out for that game as well. So they, they now need to regroup. I mean, it's a nice position to be though yeah. in, though, isn't it? With, with problems to which you've just outlined and highlighted, but still being 5-0. Yeah, you can't win everything pretty. But yeah. uh, a few alarm bells there for the Giants. Yeah. It required some heroics. Mm. And we're going to make this uh, this hero, James Peatling, uh, the Crypto.com Brave Play of the Week. Lotto, just take us through what he did with the courage to leave his man. Well, he's on Jack Sinclair there, who is you know, arguably St Kilda's best player. And he left him at the right time to support Harry Perryman in the air. And that, that is as good as it gets uh, coming on as a sub. It's not easy. And the players just all got to him. They loved what he did for his side. Uh, hopefully he gets a start next week because of it. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Lotto, Carlton had been a little bit like GWS, unbeaten until the weekend, but they finally lost Adelaide. And we'll touch on the positive uh, aspect of that game uh, through the Crows lens in a moment. But the movement of the ball from a Carlton perspective, it had been down pretty much all season yeah. and it was bad again. Yeah, they're ranked 15th for Marks, Demo, inside forward 50. So they, they take 16%, so that's fifth. 15th, so I just think Kerno and Mackay just bang and crash into each other too often. And we're going to show one, the last clip is how it should work, where they get good separation with each other. So they had more inside 50s, they had uh, 28 scoring shots, but they kicked 14 goals, 14. So they just don't get any easy marks inside 50. But this is the one, Harry Mackay needs to get up earlier, yep. get up higher up the field, and then separate himself from Charlie Kerner. I, I think they made a mistake playing Pitt Net as well. Right. They don't need two big ruckmen in that side. They've set a high benchmark coming out of the preliminary final last year and starting the year with high expectation deservedly and got off to a good start, 4-0. and zero. But there were problems within those wins. Just take a, a look and take our, our viewers through what you're observing. I mean, uh, obviously the Adelaide game was, was a loss, but even the North game, I know it was only a 10-goal win, but they, they weren't good in that game for early. No, nah, scrappy wins and they've beaten sides they should beat. Uh, Brisbane was a great win, Fremantle was a strong win, but it's what's to come. So mm. they've, they've got four in one, so that's good. But look at this run. This is difficult. Uh, GWS, Geelong, Collingwood, Melbourne and the Sydney Swans and soft tissue injuries, Damo. Which massive, is really massive issue. Terrell was a late withdrawal with the yeah. soft tissue. They lost in the game, Sard and McGovern, and they've both had histories of, of soft tissue. Uh, Motlop is carrying a soft tissue, yeah. Cunningham, uh, Martin. It's a major problem now for Andrew Russell and, and his fitness department at that footy club as they now embark upon that tough stretch of five matches off a loss without some really key players. And often once they start, they just keep coming. So it's a watch at Carlton. Now, on the flip side, the Adelaide Crows, I thought their ball movement was what we wanted to see. They'd been too safe in previous rounds. He let the handbrake off off the team and they're much better for it. Can I ask you why you think it took until round five for this to happen? And you refer to the handbrake and mm. you'll see Rankin in a couple of these uh, bits of vision here. He had his best game maybe as a crow, certainly for the season, and he was used in the middle of the yeah. ground in a way that I think you're asking yeah. Matthew Nix to do so. He'd been to five centre bounces for the year. He, he took 20 on the weekend, so that made a huge difference. Tex Walker 
he looked better for it because of the ball moving up the field. He kicked five, mm. so they were a different side. You've got to hand it to the clubs that respond to adversity, and, and the Crows did that against uh, the Carlton team, as did Essendon against Western Bulldogs. I put my hand up. I went them hard last week after what they had done against Port Adelaide, but they turned up, Lordy, and there were desperation moments early on. Every single player can hold his head high from an Essendon perspective. Yeah, they had a lot of injuries going into this game as well, and, and I thought the first half, it was pretty open sort of footy. You know, both teams were turning the footy over and it wasn't sort of a game that you'd beat a top four or six side but then they ramped up the pressure kicked 10 of the next 11 goals in this game of footy and the dogs just had no answers uh, so this is the way you know you can get sustained performance so again we'll watch the bombers friday night in adelaide yes can they bring they've got to back it up they've got to back yeah. it up but, but this it, has to become the standard it does but it was a sensational win uh, by the young and the old yeah well the old yeah. i want to yeah. focus on now because mm. uh, the old being todd goldstein yeah. did a number it must be said on uh, the reigning all australian ruckman in tim english and there's some worries now for english yeah. i mean we don't know what he does next year but ultimately we do know what he's doing this year and he's not anywhere near all australian standard no. so we, we're showing a hot uh, vision here of of him he's just not tough enough he's not physical enough and what his strength is is his mobility around the ground but he's dropping marks he's, he's really down on confidence and was well beaten by Tim English um, you could just saw he got worse and worse as the game goes on so yeah I'd give him a rocket I just think he's got to toughen up and um, man up because that's where it starts in the centre bounce and he was well beaten on the weekend there's a lot of problems at the, the Bulldogs, and another aspect we're going to have a look at right now is players being played out of position, Lord. You, you wanted to highlight this, just to, I suppose, focus on some, some big names at that footy club who, over the journey in recent times, have all been used differently to, to, to what has made them the names and the big names that they are. Yeah, players just want consistency and they want to know their role and they want to know where they stand with the coach. And I just looked at over the last two or three years, players at the Western Bulldogs who have fallen out of form because I believe Luke Beveridge plays them in positions that they weren't drafted to or they don't play their best footy and there's too many of them that he's done that to and he's doing it to currently at the moment. There's a, it seems to be a, a massive disconnect between the, the contracting of players at that footy club yeah. with the actual selection. Mm. I, I refer obviously to, to Daniel and McRae and Dale who have all found themselves out of the team this year in various forms and all on long-term yeah. deals. Do you believe he thinks uh, they're not a chance this year, Luke Beveridge, the way he's coaching? Oh, well, I think his, mi his messaging is very mixed. Mm. I mean, we, we tried to dissect what he said uh, since Friday night in, in what he said post-match, and I, I think he's got own mixed messaging himself yeah. with, with delivery to the public. He was talking about the, the now, the past, the, the next game against St Kilda in a context of playing O'Donnell mm. against uh, Essendon yeah. just for that purpose. So I don't get it. I, I don't think there's an immediacy to it. And the only wins they've had now are against Gold Coast at yeah. a windy Ballarat and, and West Coast. Mm. No, real, real, I'm really concerned for them too because I think that he's sort of conceding that he doesn't think the side's in the mix this year and we're at round five. Shouldn't be the yeah. case. Yeah. Hawthorne, Lotto, there's worries there. Have, have they gone backwards? They have, Damo. I think that we all thought, you know, he made the hard calls. Um, you get uh, games into youth, but third year in you should be improving, but they have gone backwards. Yeah, and this man, Sam Mitchell, up until I think mm. this point, this is after the loss to the Gold Coast uh, on the weekend, he actually does now look lost. You're just not going to be able to compete against against anyone the way we played tonight, and that's just completely unacceptable way to play. And we should be past games like that. Um, you know, they were they were really good, but that's as bad as we've played in a long time. Just shattered there, Sam Mitchell. Mm. You can see a shattered coach, but let's. It's look a bit at, like North Melbourne, yeah. though, isn't it? I mean, unless you get quality mm. in, it doesn't matter how many games you get into the kids. Uh, so look, listen to some of these. As a midfielder now, it's easy to get 20 touches, 25 touches, and they were smashed through the midfield. Mackenzie had three disposals. Uh, Josh Ward seven. Uh, Newcomb had 10, Connor Nash 10 and Warple 14. So they're as lower midfield numbers you're going to get. If you get beaten by the Suns in the midfield, you've got no chance. And it was like men v boys against mm. the Gold Coast Suns on the weekend. And that's what I worry about. They took Nick Watson, a small forward in the draft. Maybe could they have looked at Riley Sanders, another big midfielder, but um, overwhelmed again. Hard to know what Gold Coast Suns beat, but are you liking what they're, they're doing? Yeah, I, I, think they, I think they'll challenge most teams this year, yeah. 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 Speaking of challenge, uh, Port Adelaide was challenged at uh, the three-quarter time stage of their game against Fremantle, and it was their big names, Lordo, who stood up. You can see the score, you can see the time remaining. Great goal there by Butters. And then look at this mark. This may be the mark of the year in a contextual form, Lordo, that from big Charlie Dixon had had a quiet game. He had a robust conversation with his coach, kicked the goal he needed it to. This passage of play, Rosie from Butters to Jason Horn-Francis, who 
Ken Hinckley put into the goal square for that play, kick, takes the mark, kicks the goal. It's what you expect from your big time players to stand up when you need them most. But uh, I look at Fremantle and I, I raised this last week. They always keep you in the game because they can't score. And set, they're a good side, Fremantle. Their defence is unbelievable. You love Luke Ryan, so do I. Alex Pierce, fantastic game. Brayshaw, Sarong, Luke Jackson. But they can't score and they keep you in the game. And again, uh, the rank, number one ranked defence, but 15th ranked forward. And they've lost two games in a row they should have won. And you've been big on this yeah. lack of scoring yeah. in terms of the, the Dockers being yes. held back because of it. Yeah. Yeah. Since Pavlich, they haven't had somebody who hits the scoreboard hard. That's been a long period of time. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Chris Fagan mm. was happy to start the round of footy way back now on, uh, on Thursday. But uh, look at the smile on his face here, Lotto. I feel like that's one of the best games we've played in a, in a long time. We've played some good games, but that was... Uh, that was a pretty special sort of effort, I think. It was, and it was on the back of some, some bigger names, Cam Rayner primarily, who had maybe the best game he's ever played for the, the Lions, at least by way of impact. Yeah, they, they put enormous heat on the Melbourne midfield. Oliver had a poor game. He had to go to the back line. They lowered their eyes. May and Lever had no impact whatsoever. Um, whenever Melbourne got the ball, they forced them to panic. They, uh, you know, they were too tough around the midfield. They were smart going forward, so that was a huge win. Yep. I'm enjoying putting the tips up as we now do on this show each week, Lotto. It's unusual for me to be uh, on the lead here and I've maintained yeah. it even though I had a bad week, but you did too. Oh, you've been too good all year, Damo. Uh, lucky it's still round five and plenty of time to go. Hey, thanks to Crypto.com as always for its involvement with Access All Areas. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week.